Beans are the most unhappy vegetable. <laughs> we having stew for supper, Mom? No, depends on Uncle Joe. If he remembered to buy meat, we're having stew. If he didn't, we're having vegetable soup. How could he forget to buy meat? Well, you know Uncle Joe. Yeah, we'd better hunt for some eggs for an omelet. Come on, Billy Joe. <laughs> Seems to me you ought to have more confidence in Uncle Joe. He said he was gonna buy the meat, then he bought it. Come on, you girl. There's no good. That sure is a stubborn hunk of stew meat you got there, Joe. Boom, you sound there to sing a Ah, quit showing off. <laughs> Want to help you fellas, Art? Anytime, Joe. Boom, you cantankerous pest! Try a little tenderness, Joe. Just pull around the other end and push. <laughs> Instead of standing there making stupid suggestions, why don't you give a fellow a hand? Yeah, Charlie, why don't we? Because it's more fun to stand here and make stupid suggestions. <laughs> Come on, get out! That's the ticket, Joe. In case he sends you to the store for something, Joe, he don't mess around, do you? <laughs> Smell something. Oh no, not another skunk. You know something, Joe? This is the first time I've ever been up close to a real live buffalo. Can't say I'm enjoying the experience. Mm. Now I know why the ending on the front side of the nickel's got that pained expression on his face. <laughs> he don't know you bought this critter, does she, Joe? No. Don't you think you ought to warn her? Oh, I ain't a scared of Kate. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, hi, Kate. No, no, Kate, Kate, how you explain? <laughs> if somebody who ain't scared of somebody, he sure does shy of nobody. Yeah. Very funny. Come on. Well, see you later, Joe. <laughs> Kate, I got a surprise for you. Oh, the minute I mention surprise, she's going to expect something. <laughs> Maybe it'd be a good idea to make a guessing game out of it. Kate? Guess who bought a buffalo? <laughs> oh, she'd know right away it was me. <laughs> Maybe the best idea would be to take you back and let Charlie and Floyd mind you for a while. <laughs> Uncle Joe, is that you? Uh, yeah. You wait here. <laughs> How are you, Kate? I'm fine. What's for supper? Stew, if you remember to bring the meat. Meat? Oh, sure, sure, I remember. Well, where is it? It's outside. Well, bring it in so we can get it in the pot. I, I don't think this meat will fit in any pot we've got. See, I bought a mite more than you figured on. Well, how much is a mite more than I figured on? About 1,100 pounds. 1,100 pounds? <laughs> you see, the government had this sale on. I didn't know the government sold meat. Yeah, they... Sale or no sale, you shouldn't have bought so much. We don't have a deep freeze, it'll spoil. Oh, you don't need to worry about that. It'll keep fine the way it is. You see, it's still in the original package. <laughs> what are you talking about? Kate, they... <laughs> I didn't hear anything. <laughs> now, Kate, out of, of my way. I, I, I out of just... my way. She should have screamed by now. <laughs> nice looking out, ain't it? It's a buffalo. A buffalo? Real genuine article. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. If there's one thing we don't need around here, it's a phony buffalo. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't take it this way. What way? Uh, whatever way you're going to take it. I'm not going to take it anyway. You are back. But I can't. The government man says that all sales are final. What? You know, they don't run the government like a department store. Sell you a buffalo, let you bring it home for a few days and try it out. Hi, Uncle Joe. Did you get the meat? He sure did. I told you Uncle Joe would come through. Where is it? Outside. <laughs> Any 
questions? I'll start the omelet. <laughs> Poor child. She'll probably have nightmares. Of all the silly things. What's the matter with Betty Jo? She just said there was... It's outside. <laughs> Shook him up pretty good. The way everybody's acting around here, you'd think I'd done something foolish. The thought had crossed my mind. Well, there ain't nothing foolish about it. That buffalo's gonna make us rich. We'll be rolling in the green stuff. We'll be millionaires. Uncle Joe. Oh, what's the use? Maybe this money order will change your mind. Money order? <laughs> Pay to the order of the shady rest. Hunting Lodge. Has a nice gamey sound, don't it? Read on. The sum of $50. Who sent this to you? His Lordship. Whose Lordship? Lord Faversham's Lordship. That's a down payment on a week of buffalo hunting at $25 a day, including room, board, and guide. The skinning and ammunition's extra. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Maybe this newspaper article will clear things up for you. Lord... Faversham, who has just returned from an African safari, told reporters that he has hunted every type of big game except the American buffalo. And when I saw that, I... You sat right down and wrote him a letter telling him about the great buffalo hunting at the Shady Rest Hunting Lodge. Yeah. I... How'd you know that? Well, what else could you do since you'd already ordered the buffalo? Well, yeah, I... How'd you know that? Just a wild guess. <laughs> well, it don't matter. The thing is that once word gets around that a famous man like Lord Faversham's hunted here, why, well, sportsmen from all over the world would gather here. We'll have standing room only at $25 a day. We'll make millions. We... Uncle Joe, I, uh, I want you to send this back. But I can't. Lord Faversham's on his way. He's due to arrive here tomorrow. Oh, that's too bad. Huh? Because you and the buffalo are leaving tonight. <laughs> okay. Some women just don't understand big business. <laughs> players in the last act of the return of Hiawatha. Where's your costume, Mom? She wouldn't wear it. She didn't want to help cooperate to make this a real Wild West welcome for Lord Faversham. I am too cooperating. I could have sent him a telegram stopping him from coming. And, and I'll let you decorate the lobby with... The train's coming! Oh, what are we going to do when his lordship gets here? Uh, no, 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 just, just act natural. Uh, curtsy. Where, where's Betty? Where's Betty? Where, where's Betty? Betty! Betty! Where, where? Betty! Right here. <laughs> what have you done to that critter? Just spruced him up. Curry combed him a little. And we sprayed some of your aftershave lotion on him, too. <laughs> he looks real nice. Well, he ain't supposed to look nice. He's supposed to look like a real wild buffalo. Take him over under that water tower and let him roll in the mud. <laughs> Making a household pet out of him. We like him. Come on, Bill. Well, Cannonball's just about here. Okay. Charles, come over here. Billy Joe, Bobby Joe. Now, Billy, you, you, you stand here. Bobby, you stand there. No, 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 let's not get excited. No, Billy, you stand over here. Bobby, you stand over here. Now, keep calm, keep calm. In case you come over here with... I'm bleeding. You wing the water tower. Uncle Joe, the buffalo got away. What? The shot scared him and he bolted. Which way did he go? That way. No, there he goes. Come on, everybody, oh. after him. Oh, wait for me. There he goes. He's coming back. That's you. I got his tail. That's my hat. This way. Help, I fell in a patch of rambles. Well, when Uncle Joe said a Wild West welcome, I guess he wasn't kidding. <laughs> Although I don't think the West was ever quite this wild. <laughs> uh, sorry, 
sure you had to carry your bags up by yourself, but as I explained, Uncle Joe and the oh, girls... Oh, it's quite all right. I'm used to roughing it. I do hope they get their buffalo. Nothing like the thrill of the hunt. <laughs> it was pretty thrilling. Well, there you are. Oh, thanks. My, you ride a pretty hand. You know, you're the first lordship we ever had stay at the Shady Rest. I'm honored. The uh, Earl of Wintergreen does come and stay occasionally, though. The Earl of... Uh... Well, that's just a nickname. He's a traveling salesman for a liniment company. His real name's Earl Kilby. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> would, would, would you like a cup of tea? I know that's your national drink. Oh, uh, no, no, thank you. Mr. Smoot served some en route. You know, it was dashed hospitable. He stopped the train and drew the hot water right out of the locomotive boiler. <clears throat> it was rather good. <laughs> Had a smoky taste. <laughs> well, if, if there's anything you want, you just ask for it, because we want to make your stay here as enjoyable as we can. Oh, I'm sure it will be. Charming place. Not at all what I expected from Mr. Carson's letter. Oh? You must have done quite a lot of rehabilitation to this place since he wrote, disposed of the peeling wallpaper, carpeted the bare floors, installed electricity, and sent the Indians packing. <laughs> Indians? Uh, yes, you know those savages who used to squat on your front porch weaving blankets. Oh, those Indians! <laughs> uh, tell me, if, is that uh, some of their work, this blanket? Kate, we just... Is this? <laughs> Your Lordship. <laughs> I'm Buffalo Joe Carson. Uh, you've met my niece, uh, Buffalo Kate Bradley. <laughs> these are, he's here, her daughters. That's Buffalo Betty. <laughs> Buffalo Billy. How? Buffalo Bobby. Ugh. John, I hope you bagged your buffalo. The one that was running around down to the water tower. Oh, no, he got away. Happens to even the most experienced guys. I say, what's that? Buffalo. After him, girls. <laughs> Extraordinary. First there's one at the train stop and then another one right here at the lodge. Yeah, they're all over the place. Just as you said in your letter. I wish I'd seen that letter. I must say I thought you were exaggerating. Uncle Joe, exaggerate. <laughs> I sure do wish those Indians had come back. Indians? Mm -hmm. The blanket weavers. I, I missed them squatting around the front door. Oh, oh. Well, they probably went for more wool. To pull over our eyes? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I really am looking forward to a week of the most wonderful hunting. I should like to shoot uh, three or four buffalo. Well, you may have to settle for just one. Is that the limit? No. Uncle Joe's letter writing. That's the limit. <laughs> you been? I've been worried sick. Your bed wasn't slept in and... Oh, what... I've been out all night looking for that dang buffalo. No, no sign of him? No. Thought I spotted him out in the middle of a field with a Les Williams bull. Just barely made it over the fence. <laughs> oh, my darn barbed wire. <laughs> hey, if I don't find that buffalo, we're going to be out of business before we get started. Don't include me in this. It was your idea. Now, that's all the thanks I get for trying to make you a wealthy woman. Now, I appreciate that, Uncle Joe, but don't you see... Kate, when... don't preach to me. Lord Faversham's going to be down in a minute, and i got to figure out something pretty good to tell him. How about the truth? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, Kate, I'll think of something. <laughs> it's only 7 o'clock in the morning. And I say it's too late. Then buffalo herds come down from the mountains about sunrise, graze a while, and then go back up where they came from. If you don't get them early, you don't get them. Mr. Carson, I have hunted wild game all over the world. Lord Faversham, you're paying for room, board, and guide, right? Right. Ammunition and skinny, extra. Yeah. Well, I'm the guide you're paying for. And I say if you don't get them early in the morning, you don't get them. You might just as well go back to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Look to Sam Hill. Morning, Miss Cousin. Morning. 
A quarter to five is more like the middle of the night. Well, you see, I remember what you told me yesterday. If you don't get them early, you don't get them at all. So should we go and get them, old boy? Hey. <laughs> Just a second. Too bad. What's the matter? It winds from the southeast. What difference does that make? Well, you see, you don't know the first thing about Buffalo Hunt. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Buffalo Hunt. Another game, Your Lordship? No, thank you. Six is enough. <laughs> would, you, would you like some more pie and tea? No, nothing, Mrs. Bradley, thank you. Uh, tell me, have you seen Mr. Carson lately? No, he's been out scouting the buffalo for you. Oh, really? Well, frankly, I think he's stalling. Has been for three days. And I don't mind telling you that I'm jolly well fed up. If and when you see Mr. Carson, I'll thank you to inform him that I went to a great deal of trouble and expense to come out here to hunt based on his lavish representations that he told me about in his letter, which I intend to turn over to my lawyer as evidence when I sue for misrepresentation and fraud. I'm sorry to be so unpleasant. Good night. Your chip, can you really sue Uncle Joe? I suppose so. Boy, does this put us in a spot. What are we going to do now, Mom? Let Lord Fathersham sue Uncle Joe? Or let Uncle Joe find out we've caught the buffalo and we've been hiding them? So you've been hiding? <laughs> Letting me tramp the fields all day, making a fool out of myself. Now, if you'll just simmer down, we can explain everything. What is there to explain? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? You didn't want me to succeed in the hunting business because you was afraid some other hunting lodge would hire me away and you'd lose me and my money-making ideas. That's not the reason at all. And stop shaking your chicken leg at me. <laughs> Lynn, what other reason could there be? A very good one. We've become attached to that old buffalo, and we don't want Lord Faversham to shoot him. So we're going to keep him. Look, this is a hunting lodge, not a home for old buffalo. Lord Faversham just wants to kill him so he can say he shot a buffalo. He doesn't even want the meat. The poor old thing. The poor old thing? What about this poor old thing? What do you want me to do, get sued? Maybe go to jail if I couldn't pay if I lost? Of course not. Then you'd better tell me where you hid the buffalo. Mom, isn't there any other way? We don't want Lord Faversham to shoot our buffalo. Well, maybe he'll miss. He's a crack shot. Maybe we ought to hide his gun. <laughs> Mom, can't you think of anything? I have been trying to think of something, but I keep coming up blank. Blank. Hold on. I think I just thought of what I was trying to think of. <laughs> Where the deer and the antelope play. Joe, you'll kill more buffaloes with your singing than his lordship will with them blank cottages. You just leave the buffalo hunting to me. Keep an eye out for where we're supposed to stop. You know, there was no need for your uncle to load my gun. I'm perfectly capable of loading it myself. Yes, well, I guess he just wanted to make sure you got the right ammunition. Oh, yeah, yeah, duty of the guide and all that, I suppose. <laughs> well, tell me, did your early pioneers really hunt buffalo this way? I mean, from a railroad train? Oh, yes. Of course, I, I didn't uh, experience this personally, but I've seen pictures of it in books. <laughs> Here you are, your lordship. You're all loaded. Now keep your eye peeled, because we're getting in the heart of the buffalo country. <laughs> Say, if you don't spot them, our trained buffalo dog here will. Uh, I'll sit across the aisle so as to give your lordship plenty of shooting room. <laughs> By Jove, I think he spotted one. <laughs> Yeah, it's a beauty. Get him in your sights and blast him. You better open the window first. Yeah. I missed. No, you didn't. Buffalo hides is thicker than most. It takes longer for the bullet to get through to him. He'll lie down and roll over pretty soon. <laughs> lie down and roll over. There he goes. Joe. Where are you going? Well, I'm going to fetch the blighter. Oh, no need for that. We'll send one of the native guides back for him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Lord, 
shift. Come on, Buffalo. We gotta move down the track. <laughs> I'll fetch it. Go. That one we got to leave for the Indians, according to the Buffalo Treaty, 1892. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry, I'm so clumsy. <laughs> How many times has he shot our buffalo? Six. Oh, I wish he'd quit. I'm pooped. Look, Buff, will you lie down when you hear the shot? Well, you don't have to tell him. He's learning to do it by himself. <laughs> now. You got him. Congratulations. He's dead or nice duty. Come back here, you miserable hound. He's running away. And so are your daughters. Your daughters? <laughs> Mr. Carson, I think an explanation is in order. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> well, your lordship, I guess you'll be glad to get back to old England, or as you fellas say, old Bailey. Well, hardly. You see, old Bailey is the first step to prison. Yes, and if his lordship hadn't been so forgiven, that's where you'd be right now. In Hooterville's Old Bailey. Well, no hard feelings. After all, I did get what I came for, an American buffalo. A magnificent trophy. The chaps in the club will be green with envy. Our poor buffalo. Cruel. It's terrible. <laughs> for goodness sake, stop bawling. You got a standing offer from his lordship. If you ever get to England, he'll take you to the zoo, and you can look at him all you want. <laughs> Uh-oh. Joe, give us a hand! Hold him! Get that buffalo dog away from him! He got away! Come on, let's get him. than a Wild West welcome. And that's a Wild West goodbye. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.